as we move forward, yes, <laughs> what I was asking you was if you wanted to, because you brought up the chromosome two fusion in the first couple hours, but you yes. didn't really have enough time to expound on it. So if you wanted to take yeah, a couple yeah. minutes and go over. So it's it's head to head telomeric, um, the occurrence of telomeres head to head. So basically we've got a chain of one sequence that is a telomere and then the other sequence, which is a telomere fragment are right after it. So it is, it is <laughs> the end points of two chromosomes. Um, and we can see the similarity between 2A and 2B in um, other primates like apes and chimpanzees and stuff like that. Um, but there is a second fragment of a centromere in the lower half of that chromosome 2, and there is end-to-end -end, um, telomeric fusion there. We can, we can see it. So um, I, I just, yeah, that to me is the most convincing thing about it is that the, the um, sequence goes sort of you know one way and then it goes the other way exactly as if it was two um different different chromosomes okay mark i appreciate that <clears throat> what i want to do yeah. guys for this discussion is keep it as equally timed as possible no one really interrupting each other so whoever wants to get in on this chat let me know and we'll kind of go around the room like we did in the last open mic so mark i appreciate that before i give a complete response i would like to ask you a question do you hold to the same argument that Gutsy Gibbon does, she expounded it in her video, um, where she says that the the chromosome two, that 798 base pair region, that's the only mm -hmm. place you find in the genome your uh, your sequences there, the TTAGG for for telomeres and CCCTAA. That's the only place you find these in the genome in, in a mirror no. image. Oh, in a mirror image. Yeah, I think so. I think that is the only place you'll find them. Yeah. Okay. He's trying to trick you, but what he, because. Well, no, no, Grayson, of, we're going to go around. Okay, go, go ahead, Grayson. You, you Go ahead. Because he knows of smaller instances where you might have like one or two repeats of a head to head telomeric sequence, but like. Well, but, 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 the Grayson. The thing is that it's the. This no, no, is no, the no, no, no. It's not a key thing because, Grayson, you know, you know, and I can pull mm -hmm. up Erica's video. And in our debate, you said many times, it's the only place. It's the only place. And then I show you on <laughs> a, a multiple chromosomes because Chris Roop and I looked into it. And even Dr. Tompkins was fascinated. He's actually going to put out a paper soon on it where we have multiple instances of TTAGGG, CCCTAA, the mirror image on chromosomes that have nothing to do with, with a fusion. But you did say, and it's, it's recorded in our debate that no, no, no. It's the only place in the whole genome. Erica said it too, the only place in the entire genome. And I admit it. I said that is a point for the evolution model because the evolution model, Joel Duff, uh, I love the chromosome two topic. I challenge you to a debate on it if, if you would like to do that in the future. Anyways, and so the point is, and don't shift the goalpost, we have multiple locations and I'll pull up just one right now. And one is the chromosome nine. Grayson, you're kind of silent. Talk. Did Erica not say in her video that it's the only place in the entire genome that we find those sequences? Don't shift the goalposts. Don't say, well, it's the number of sequences. That wasn't the challenge. The challenge was to show us one other area in the genome where we find these sequences. Go, go ahead. I want you to respond, Grayson. Right. Well, I can't speak to what Erica said, but I believe that uh, I, my exact quote was, was, was a little bit different than you're characterizing it there. Uh, my, well, go ahead. I think my exact go quote ahead. was, I'm not aware of a sequence that wasn't very strong as an absolute claim, but I do applaud you for actually going into the blast and actually going in and trying to find these sequence, or at least, you know, having Chris Roop help you do that. But I, I think that ultimately the point that it is the largest number of head-to-head -head telomeric repeats in the entire human genome is still completely valid because your position would have to be that that is just a coincidence like mm -hmm. that's that's what your position would have to be okay let me respond it's actually not because we found so what we discovered i'm trying to pull them up because i had all the chromosomes listed it was chromosome it was actually the chromosomes that i predicted so in in our debate and i'll pull up the slide so in our debate, I went over some of the work I did. So here we go. Okay. So here, here's the chromosomes. Okay. One to 22 sex chromosomes. So here's the chromosome two. These interstitial repeats, you can see them color coded. Okay. 
So here's the chromosome two. We can see quite a bit of these repeats. But we also see quite a bit of repeats in chromosome five. We and notice how chromosome two is the biggest uh, chromosome two as well. And but yet we find quite a bit in the I just want to make sure that this is the right diagram. So how many of those other chromosomes have a second centromere fragment? Well, the, the second centromere is is a good argument, too. That's a secondary one. So we'll get to that in a little bit. OK. Well, any of those other chromosomes have a I, a I was actually uh, actually the, the, that other diagram I was just showing was a um, a layout of the alphoid repeats. It's a very similar argument, the so-called cryptic centromere, and then also the ancient remnants of a fusion with the telomeres. They're very similar, and there's also there's similar responses. So we'll do it with the telomere one first. So this is the telomeric repeat. So notice chromosome two, again, it's the, it's the largest chromosome. But you'll find there's quite a bit of interstitial repeats, right? And they're all kind of in the middle. But wait a minute, there's quite a bit on 16. There's quite a bit on 21, 20. You can do a blast analysis and see this for yourself. Notice how many you find on 21 and 22. And yet those chromosomes are tiny compared to the chromosome two. But these aren't associated with a fusion. And yet what do we find there? TTA, GGG, and other instances of CCC, TAA, the, the reverse complement. 16 has a lot. And I predicted in, in our debate, Grace, I said, you know what? I would, I would be... I wouldn't be surprised if we found those repeats that are supposedly signatures of a fusion in these chromosomes. And yet that's what we discovered. We discovered that you find them in mirror image, TTA, GGG, CCC, TAA in, in these areas. Okay. And as a matter of fact, in the chromosome two area, it's actually very degenerate. And what I mean by that is we don't really find the repeats TTA, GGG. We don't find many instances of them in tandem order. We actually find in other chromosomes, we find more instances of them where they're in tandem repeat, where they're not degenerated. And so that's a uniqueness in other chromosomes versus the, um, the chromosome two spot. Anyways, here's the biggest site we found. So here's BLAST, you can see all the data here. And um, chromosome, chromosome nine, large area where these repeats are all over the place. You can see here, large area, very similar to the chromosome two. Uh, TTA, GGG, CCC, TAA, mirror image. Here's the chromosome two spot. T so you have a few in, in tandem, one, I highlighted them red, two, three, four, and then here's the CCC, TAA, but it's very degenerate because there's really only a few in tandem. And what I mean is it's very broken. Look, T, G, A, G, G. So you don't get one nice tandem until many uh, letters in. So the point is we find this exact signature in many other chromosomes. Chromosome nine, we find the signature and it's a large signature. So it's not just a few, like Grayson was saying earlier, it's very similar to the chromosome two. And so I guess my question then, is chromosome nine, is this, a, is this a representation of an ancient fusion, Mark? Could be. I don't know enough about it, but it could be. Um, does that have a centromere, a second centromere that's been deactivated like the um, chromosome two does? Well, the, the, that's the problem is when you go to the cryptic centromere argument, there's no cryptic centromere found either. Those alpha- okay, Let's not go to the alpha find, yet. But let's let, let's not go to Alpha yet because you just you just talked about for like fifteen minutes. So right, let's well, and that's the thing. What you said. But again, this right here is is the main argument because some evolutionists have actually just conceded and said, yeah, we don't really find remnants of a cryptic centromere because well, it would before be you move on, let's just address what you've be... already said before you start making new points, right? Well, I, I allowed Mark to address it, but well, he went I brought to the it up. Centromere. So yeah, whoever I, wants I to respond to this. We find an identical, nearly identical signature here in chromosome nine. Can, can we just address that? It, I mean, you're going to address continue. it. Somebody address it. Quit whining. I, I'm trying to address it, but you keep talking over me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> go for Mark it. asked go a for question it. about the cryptic center the, here. The number of repeats in chromosome nine. What is that? Nine repeats? Uh, you have like six going forward and three going reverse and head to head. No, no, no. Right? I'm just showing the mirror image. Right, but that's that you don't have any repeats. Like, I mean, where where's your repeats before that, right? 
And so then in the chromosome two example, I mean, there are a lot more than just nine repeats there. That is a much larger sequence of forward to reverse telomeres in the exact place that it would be predicted it would find we would find it if the chromosome two fusion did happen. So again, and this is what I already levied against you and you have not addressed. Is that just a coincidence? No, it, it uh, you don't get it. You don't get it. These repeats that we find, okay, there's now even in the secular literature, and this is what sparked the interest of Dr. Tompkins to actually look into it himself. These repeats, TTAGG, these interstitial repeats, CCCTAA, they're found everywhere in the genome. They're associated with functional roles. For example, gene expression, okay? This has been documented in the, in the secular literature in at least one paper. And then Dr. Tompkins went and did the analysis himself and he tested it all and, and looked for activity and all that. And he confirmed it, okay? So the point is that contradicts the argument from the evolution side that says, well, this signature is what we'd expect to find if, if this were the ancient remnants of, of a fusion. Then the response typically, like with Erica and then with you, maybe not as loudly and proudly as Erica, is, well, okay, we find these repeats everywhere in the genome, but never in mirror image. It's either TTAGG here or CCCTAA over here. But yet I find you at least five or six chromosomes that contradicts that argument and one specific chromosome, chromosome nine, that is quite large, that contradicts that as well. And now you're shifting the goalpost. It doesn't matter. The chromosome two I've already shown is a lot bigger. And so we find a little bit more of the repeats in chromosome two than versus chromosome nine. It's it's not a big deal. It, it doesn't help your case is, is the point. Okay. You, well, we find the, these sequences the, everywhere. They're associated with function. There's a massive signature in the chromosome nine. Has nothing to do with a fusion. The chromosome two, nothing to do with a fusion either. Go ahead. Right. Well, yeah. You, well, you, from the paper that I'm reading, sort of says that the the uh, indication of nine PTER, the chromosome nine, suggests that that was a duplication before the gorilla hum chimpanzee human split. Um, this is a very technical paper. I'd love for you to read it, but. Um, the divergence indicates this duplication predated the gorilla chimpanzee human. I fish data would indicate a more recent date because only one location is labeled in gorilla and orangutan compared with site corresponding to both nine in human and chimpanzee. So you're looking at um, a, a system where we have these duplicate um, um, inverted mirror um, expressions, as you've called them. The problem that you have is they exist in all other primates as well. They're all over the place in other primates as well, and they correspond to the ones in humans. Now, you might say design, that's fine. But the big difference is in two, where we have the repeats, but they're not like the, the repeats actually exist in chimps. They're just not fused together. Well, Mark, I don't want to interrupt you, but right here, look at the image. Here's the repeats in the chimpanzee genome. Notice the massive differences. So we're finding that these internal telomeric-like repeats are associated with a lot of activity and function, mainly gene expression. Look at how many of these repeats exist in the human genome versus the chimpanzee genome. So no, Great, there's Donnie. not very much homology. It's actually very weak homology. Donnie. The chimpanzee genome is quite different when it comes to these repeats. Donnie, yes or no, has the chimpanzee genome been completely sequenced? No, no, it's very, right. it's been weakly yeah. sequenced and right. human genome has been used as, yeah. as a. So then what you're showing on powerful. screen here, one is not showing head to head telomeres. That's what all of the graphs that you so, so far you've shown have conflated interstitial sequences with the head to head sequences. But, but I went in about. deeper. Yeah, but I went in deeper. Wait, wait, wait. Group you, you and can't I went conflate in deeper. that. But secondarily, we haven't sequenced the chimpanzee genome. Yeah. So okay. Showing okay. a graph like this is disingenuous because like, especially for the non-coding areas of the chimpanzee genome where the interstitial sequences are, we definitely have not sequenced most of those areas. So this is not, I mean, this the, your source but for this we have is creation.com source. But what we have sequenced, <laughs> dude, are you serious? This screams desperation because you're using the argument. Yes, this is documented from a CMI research because PhD scientists went into BLAST just like Chris Roop and I did, 
and and got this data. Anybody can do it and then just get a visual representation of it. It doesn't matter if you're a flat earther, a creationist or an evolutionist. This is just sound data. Now, what we understand about the genome of the chimpanzee, yes, it's very weakly sequenced and understood when compared to the human genome. This is what we got. So are you predicting that once we sequence it more and understand it more and have a stronger representation of the chimpanzee genome, you think it's going to become closer to this? You're fine to make that prediction, but you don't have that data right now. The point is we find these sequences throughout the entire genome. You can see we find quite a bit on 21, 22, 16. Yeah, chromosome two, we find a lot too. It's also a massive chromosome. Well, and the chromosome nine, we find a very similar signature. You got to stop Very conflating similar. interstitial sequences with the head to head sequences that but are I've already the shown signs you. of a fusion. Wait, wait, no, you're slapping and running. When you dig deep, you also find the mirror image T T A G G G C C C T A A yes. on many of these chromosomes. I've yeah, said you, you cannot equate them. Mind. You are conflating them. That is an issue. Don't conflate them. When you're talking about head to head sequences, be careful to only be talking about head-to-head -head sequences and don't conflate at your statements to the larger interstitial regions because that's like not accurate to do. Okay, so let me respond. You find these interstitial repeats in all these chromosomes. Now you have to dig deeper like we did here. Here's the documentation and find out how many are intact, how many are degenerate because in the chromosome two, um, in, in the so-called fusion site, you only find 10 intact TTAGG telomere sequences. In, in one of the main papers associated with the chromosome two fusion, the author said, why is it so degenerate? How are, the, how are so many of these sequences basically lost and um, destroyed or corrupted over time? When it comes to the reverse complement sequences, you find about uh, 43, and the region itself is only 798 base pairs. Chromosome two, and we're still looking, guarantee we'll find more spots, quite a big signature as well. And so when you dig deep into each of these chromosomes, okay, surprisingly you have quite a few spots where we've discovered that the mirror image, and yet nobody has suggested <laughs> that those are there because of an ancient fusion event. And yet now we have a lot of research saying that these sequences and DNA elements are there for functional reasons. That negates a fusion, and we have a functional gene overlapping the area. I mean, well, I it's think so it's a weird bit, for you guys right now. It's a bit no. It's it's absolutely weird. Like you 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 can you can look at that and you can go, oh well, that's just a coincidence that those telomeric repeats happen at the exact point that the chimpanzees. Like you can look at their DNA and they almost fit together. I think you're being really disingenuous no, no, and sort don't. of going, oh, well, those things that, you know, that that happens and those things happen. Mm -hmm. You're looking at um, sort of, you know, the, the, the actual, if you, if you line them up, the actual similarity between 2A and 2B and 2 in humans is overwhelmed. Like it is so similar. It really is. Hey, let me return. That's an assertion. We've looked at the homology. It's very weak. Um, one of the chromosomes is like there's 10% of it missing. There's no, uh, there's a specific category of satellite DNA that's not around or found around human chromosomes, including the uh, human chromosome two. Lack of homology at the ends of the chimpanzee chromosomes two and two A 2A and two B. We also find that thousands and thousands of uh, sequences surrounding the 798 base pair region, okay, in the chromosome two spot are not found in chimpanzee. And oh. when you read that highly technical paper, you see that they're trying to explain it over time through duplications and translocations and genes oh. uh, in the human genome basically moving to where they are to explain why it's so different. No, no, it's, it's very different. And now we find these sequences all throughout the genome, even in spots where we're looking at a, a mirror image, it's very degenerate at the so-called fusion site. But what we do find is associated with function. No, it's okay, looking very be, bad for the fusion argument. I, I just want to be very clear no, that no, 600,000 no, no. claim of yours is completely fictitious. I, after our last Started? debate, when you made that claim, I went back to the paper, I read the paper, and I asked you to so cite the source for that, and you were unable to do so. So uh, there is no claim that 
like what you just claimed, it, there's no source for that information. That is not true about that. So Grayson, have you read through that massive? Like, have you read through that massive paper? Because as you scroll down, they're talking about since the split, and they even have phylogenies there. I'd have to pull up the paper. And since the split, you have human chimpanzee common ancestor roughly six million years ago. Since the split. They go over massive, massive sections of that paper is saying duplication here, mutation here, translocation here. Why in the world do you think they're invoking all of those changes? Yeah, you are misreading that paper. We're trying to explain what, why saying, it's different. You, you, well, what you think that paper is saying is absolutely not in that paper. That is your misunderstanding of that paper. So <laughs> stop so citing it unless you can find in the paper okay, where it agrees you know, with you. It, 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 Neither here nor there. It's agnostic. I don't care what, what you believe about it. The point is the so-called signature that you evolutionists have been looking to for years and years is found elsewhere in the genome. We actually find it elsewhere in the genome with more tandem repeats. It's less degenerate. No. I got to say yeah. something. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I've been very patient. Now I've put in the chat the paper that I've drawn on my information from. So if you could give me a paper that says there was no fusion and this was something else, then please provide that because you don't seem willing to be able Mark, to. Mark, that is that. so now, dishonest. This actually Wait, says, no, shut up, Bubbles, shut up. You've got <laughs> nothing to contribute. Go yes, away. I do. Um, so this is this is basically saying that there's a 98 to 99 percent average sequence identity. A, a 67 kb block on the distal side of the fusion site is highly homogulous to the sequences at 22 qter. Like so, everything that you're saying that like we don't see homology at all. We don't see all the yeah we do, and I've got the paper that shows it. If you would just read through the papers. Let but I think Grayson's fine. right. Your misrep bubble shut up. You're rip misrepresenting it. Triggered, Mark. Like I see you having stuff in here. It's all from Answers in Genesis, which is a religious think tank. That's all it is. Okay. okay. Now Mark just requested that Standing for Truth that. provide a paper stating that there was no uh, fusion. No paper is going to yeah. say that, Mark. Why? Okay, the the, the ever Ken Miller Why? literally because, said because they no, all have an atheist listen. slant, uh, evolutionist slant. They all have an agenda. Of course, there's, they're not going to say There's Christian that. scientists. There's Christian geneticists. Oh what are you talking Mark, about? You don't care about those papers. God, it it is kind mean? of disingenuous to ask for an of evolutionist. <laughs> for an evolutionary secular paper to say there's no fusion. Dr. Ken Miller I mean, literally said if there's that? no fusion, yeah. just wait. Dr. Ken Miller said oh, if there's I no fusion, there's no evolution. Okay, the, the evolutionary uh, community requires a fusion, and you're scoffing at creationist sources. Again, this was done by a couple yeah. of creation scientists. This was done just by myself and Christopher Rube, where we went in using BLAST, and we started with small sequences. We said, you know what? People like Grayson are insinuating, maybe not as proudly and loudly as Erica, but Erica is saying the fusion site is the only place where we find in mere form. T-T-A-G-G-C-C-C-T-A-A -C -C -A -A, because the evolutionist rightfully concedes, yes, we find these repeats elsewhere in the genome and they're associated with what? With function. But their response is typically, but the fusion site's the only place where we find them head to head. And so we went in and we suggested, and Chris Rube specifically did the blast analysis because he's got experience with that. And we said, let's start with small sequences, just one or two, T, T, A, G, 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 C, 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 T, A, A. We found them in many chromosomes. And then we worked our way up more and more and more and more. And eventually we found the chromosome nine where there's a huge signature. It's, it's associated with, it, it's a DNA element. It's associated with function, has nothing to do with a fusion or else you're going to have to say that there's been fusions all over the genome. But no, you just want to say there's only a fusion in in the the chromosome two spot. It's not then why good. doesn't it's not why good. doesn't he publish it then? Publish it. <laughs> oh yes, because if we publish if it's it, so it, rock solid. No, 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 no. This is the thing. You guys want to make it out no, like no. scientists are just going to stop and there's a big just conspiracy. This that is not the Mark case. Me. Mark you, me. Well, let, that's let's, the let's point. Do a, like, let's, don't let's and do no, shut up, bubbles. Come on, man. Like seriously, I'm talking. What is wrong with you? Something wrong with you? Um, sure, like, the, like if you if you discover this then you should be working to get it out as soon as possible so it can be peer-reviewed. Here, like, let's do a thought experiment, fine. Mark. Let's, let's do a thought experiment, Mark. Let, let's say yeah, I do bubbles, publish okay. a paper. What's your let's, let's say I publish a paper, and then, uh -huh. and then 
uh, Richard Dawkins gets to review my paper. Do you think he's going to review that paper unbiasedly? Why would Richard Dawkins be reviewing papers? Wait, you, you, don't think, right. you don't think? Wait, you don't think? This, you don't think he's a, capable of reviewing my paper somehow? Bubble. Mary Schweitzer debunks this. She she made she published Grayson, something that went Grayson, against the consensus, the and yes. she was allowed to publish something that went against yes. the consensus. Mary no, Schweitzer actively debunks you. No, yes. no, she didn't. Now, she, she, uh, and Donnie, she's Donnie, an the very the main the point that you that need to address, Donnie. Donnie, Dude, the main, the main point, point you need to address. No, Grayson, the main point you need to address. Why, why you you've been avoiding, you've why been why avoiding you talk, Donnie, since our the debate. The main point that you need to address is the size difference. The no, size no, no, of no, the head-to-head telomeres. You don't get it. Why isn't the size important? Is bigger than at important. Why is the size she said. Yeah, why is the size important? Because the size, the as in the number of telomeric repeats that are in the head-to-head formation in chromosome 2 is larger than anywhere else in the genome. So and Donnie weak. was showing that. He Grayson, showed in chromosome so 9 that so it's soft. only a few head-to-head sequences. But in, in, in chromosome 2, he showed that it was a lot of them. It was a much larger head-to-head sequence. So Donnie needs to explain why the largest sequence would be explain, at the like exact it. fusion site predicted. No, Grayson, weak and soft, okay? Firstly, there's things That's about the chromosome 2 that are unique to the chromosome 2, but then there's things about the other chromosomes that are unique. For You're example, dodging. the chromosome 2, I'm talking. The chromosome 2 spot is very degenerate. It's very small. It's very muddled, okay? And when you actually look at it, you find a lack of unbroken telomeric repeats. Okay, you can look at it yourself over here. It's, did, it's okay, just, just, because doesn't matter. Matter. just because I'm going to another window doesn't mean that you can interrupt. Relax. Okay, so here's the sequence here. You can count them up yourself. The intact ones that we do find at the so-called fusion site, notice how they're primarily found independently or in is- isolation. That's because the other bases, they don't exist as uh, tandem repeats. State of right? degeneration G-G-A-G-G-G. doesn't matter. G-G-G. Grayson, I'm going to use my famous line. The beginnings of your sentences are starting in the middle of mine, and you need to stop now. Yeah, I'm addressed. I understand, I understand you you're excited because you're being demolished. Relax. You'll have a chance to respond. I already okay? addressed everything you're you'll saying. Have an under, listen, you'll have a chance to respond. If the 798 site within human chromosome 2 really is the ancient relics or leftovers of a fusion, we should locate thousands of these complete motifs no, in near perfect tandem we don't find that we actually find elsewhere in the genome these uh internal telomeric repeats more than 10 times where in, in tandem and so that's unique okay well you can find it on i believe it's 10 11 12 well, put, the one you the showed yourself, dude stop you're interrupting me i'm not done talking yet okay but you now, keep going on now, and listen, on and on stop, stop. The, grayson i'm gonna kick you because i'm not in the mood for your attitude tonight okay Listen, we find, contrary to what you've said and Erica says, we found these sequences, TTAGG, CCC, TAA, everywhere in the genome. And we found a spot in chromosome 9, okay? Yes, it's more degenerate than the fusion site. Okay, fine. But it's still a very large signature. But notice here, this is what you're missing. The size of the human chromosome 2 is twice, sometimes three times the size of these sites, like chromosome 21 and 22, where we find a lot of these sequences in mere image. So what? We find a a little bit more in the chromosome 2? Who cares? You're grasping at straws. You're looking desperate. Give up the chromosome 2, Grayson. Find another argument. Go ahead. Okay, so you just conceded my entire point by basically saying that the size is insignificant because it's a problem for your worldview. And you're basically saying Mm -hmm. it's only a coincidence that the largest amount like the largest head-to-head sequence is in chromosome two in your own presentation that you had just previously shown you showed in chromosome nine and you yourself said this is the largest sequence outside of chromosome two that chris roop and i were able to show and you showed the sequence and there were only nine repeats in the head-to-head formation you showed that on the screen that is much smaller than the chromosome two 
so area. Desperate. So, de so shifting the goalposts from you're not going to find any of these anywhere. We find. I never everywhere. said that. You're not going to find a large one. We find a large one. Oh, the chromosome two is the biggest. Who cares? The chromosome two itself is three to four times the size of some of these chromosomes. And so there's a bit more in them. Who cares? They're associated with DNA function. They're associated with, with uh, gene expression. This is a very weak argument from you. You're shifting. The, this is a logical oh, okay. fallacy that you're guilty of, Grayson, because you can't understand the data. It actually turns out that the fusion sequence, although it's larger, we find very few intact TTAGG and CCTAA sequences. We actually find elsewhere in the genome and other chromosomes where we find more intact. Yes, it's not as large as the chromosome two, but we find more intact. And so that is unique for those as compared to the chromosome two. Who cares? Okay, so Donnie, it's yes or no? Just, it's desperate. Just quickly, so. Yes or no? Is it a coincidence that the largest head-to-head -head sequence is in chromosome two? Just a, it's a yes or no. Is it a coincidence? Is it a coincidence that this chromosome two, which is how much larger than the chromosome nine, twice the size? So the chromosome two site's a little bigger than the chromosome nine, but it's also twice the size of a chromosome. Oh, nine. that's not true. That's not true. Could you share my screen, Donnie? Sure. Let's see how much bigger it is. But I just want to point it to the audience. A lot of goal shift moving here. No, no. Let's, I've let's see how much goal. bigger it is. Literally, the first thing I said to you was the size, and I've stuck on that point this entire time. No People goal. People can go been... watch our debate, and you were very yeah. unsure of yourself. You were repeating Erica's argument, trying to say it's the only place in the genome where we find them. In, okay, so in, now uh, you're admitting that I didn't say anything with certainty, or I didn't make an absolute statement. So well, now that's you're admitting you, you that know, I did not move well, the goal. In the debate, you would make a statement that was very certain but then i would ask you like are you sure are you? and then you and the, but then you'd realize well you didn't look into your yourself okay could we lazy. stop the meta so like then you who, who cares sure. about the meta like seriously like you're going into meta like in, during the debate you were nervous like come on dude seriously i didn't say you were um, nervous when did i, I, say I that? just want well whatever um i just want to show the fusion site and just how big it is compared to the others kind of thing right so like donnie's sort of saying oh it's a little bit big no it's not a little bit bigger it's like at least three times the size as any other site. And this is just coincidence. Are you talking about the wait, are you talking about the chromosome itself or the fusion site? Fusion site. Okay, so how many base pairs is the fusion site? Uh not hundred percent sure. It's seven hundred and ninety-eight. How many base pairs is the chromosome two itself? How large is the chromosome two? How how, how large is it? a lot larger than that what's the point you're making here what's what's yeah, the size of, of this site well I, i'm just saying that the size of of chromatome the chromatome 2 fusion site is way larger than any other the other uh, duplications that you're, you're pointing to how, how large was this site in the chromosome 9 within the chromosome 9 i just want to be very clear that there is no correlation between like the interstitial sequence length of, of, of repeats and the total size of of the chromosome so like that's a faulty right. assumption on your part all we find is these internal telomeric sequences we find them in various chromosomes including the chromosome 2. we now understand that these sequences are there for functional purposes. They serve important engineered purposes. They're not associated with ancient fusions. You want to say they're associated with ancient fusions, but there's nothing unique about the so-called fusion spot. We're just no, going to go in circles. We, I've documented it. it. I've put in the work. I'm showing it here. Donnie, you guys can Donnie, hold on to we, a we don't we say time. it. It's the geneticists that say it. We don't say it. Like It's not like we're going, oh, we've just come up with this thing to show our worldview right kind of thing. And, and sort of this this is what the scientists actually say who do the work on it. Like, you don't have to convince us. You have to convince them. Um, it was the scientists, the Mark, it was the scientists themselves that when they looked at the area, the 798 base pair region, they're the ones that said and asked the question, why is it so degenerate? Why is it so small? Why do we find so few intact TTAGG sure. telomere sequences? Questions. And yeah. they answered the question with some stories, some hypotheses, none of them oh, all that convincing. Now. Yeah. Well, well look here's the, the thing. It, it's kind of like, um, why was it a prediction that we would find this head-to-head -head fusion there?
Like, why is it that we looked at the DNA sequences and said, hey, they look like they matched up. Let's make a hypothesis that we're going to find a fusion site there. And then they found it. You know well, that this was proposed before they found the terramilic sequences, right? Well, um, the, they use a type of comparison, a type of DNA analysis that kind of stains the chromosome. And so they can see similarities. And so even before they made the prediction, they could see that there were some similarities between the human chromosome yeah. two, right? And chimpanzee and chromosome two, a, two, a, two a and two B. B. Yeah. There's some syntony there. Um, and, and so they had to choose. Oh, uh, T-Rock, is that you? You kind of sound like Mickey Mouse. Because I will say this, my wife, because I'm going on three hours and 10 minutes. My wife said my dinner was ready 10 minutes ago. Okay, sorry. It's yeah, been, no, no. Been, no, no it's been fun. It's been passionate. It's been lively. But I, like, I always appreciate conversations with you guys. So why don't we allow now T-Rock, but T-Rock, you might have to jump out and jump back in because you, you got that kind of muffled Mickey Mouse sound. 